notice of intent for construction of three new dwelling units, paved parking area, garage demolition, and related site improvements, uh, this uh, uh, on Hamden Street, uh, and also a request for a certificate of compliance on Audubon Road. Um, we had, I think, Sarah, no minutes this week? Correct, not this week. Okay, so no minutes to approve. Uh, let me first ask if there's any uh, general public comments not having to do with a specific case. Um, if not, uh, we'll proceed with the uh, first item, the only uh, hearing item uh, today, notice of intent uh, for construction of dwelling units on uh, Hamden Street. Uh, uh, who's here uh, representing the applicant? You're muted. Hi, sorry. Uh, Danielle McCann with Pioneer Development and uh, John Wallen is here as well. Um, I'm going to start the presentation and then I'm going to hand it off to John. Um, So, sorry, I had this all worked out before. Oh, there we go, share screen. So I'm gonna do a, she, uh, a screen share right now. Is that, is that okay? Sure. Okay. Sarah, it, it's telling me that it's disabled. Maybe. You should be all set now. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. It's coming through. All right. Um, so just for a general over overview of this development, and then I'll, I'll hand it over to um, John for the details. Um, the the development we're proposing at the end of Hamden Street is adding a small three unit townhome to a site that has a two unit townhome on it. Um, we're going to be providing basically creating some median income units that are, you know, townhome style uh, within a walkable neighborhood to downtown. Um, it, the, the new structure is pretty low profile. It's built into the hill. Um, and we think it meets the the goals of the sustainable Northampton plan pretty well, taking advantage of existing public infrastructure. The new construction is um, energy efficient, it's gonna be solar PV ready. Uh, the development will improve water quality, which we'll talk about today. Um, the design includes shared open space, gardening areas, open and covered bicycle storage, capture of rainwater for irrigation, and um, just kind of you know, sort of an overview, it's located on an end lot of Hampton Street. So it's abutting Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary, but it's just a mile to downtown. So, you know, it's a really nice uh, smart growth location um, that has a lot of amenities, but also reduces driving. So this is um, kind of a view of the entire site. Um, it, sorry, did you have a question? It didn't, uh, still on the first slide. It didn't go to the second slide? At least not on my screen. Is everybody still looking at the first one? Yeah, I only see yes. that as well. Yeah, it's not actually, and it's not in slideshow view. Oh, that's weird. It's there we go. Oh, there it is. Now it's yeah, it there. just changed. Oops, now it went back. All right. All right. How's that? Can you see that okay? Or is it too small? Quite small. It doesn't seem to be letting me do slideshow, so I might have to do this one at a time here, but that's okay because we don't have a lot of slides. So if I put it up, uh, so, so, that's, so that's just showing you the first again? Uh -huh. No, now, now it's showing the, uh, the, the site. Okay, um, give me one second. Let me see if I can at least zoom in at the very least. No, that was the opposite of where it needed to go.
Okay. Let's see if that helps a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Uh, for some reason, when I'm doing the slide, the slideshow, it's not, it's not sharing the screen. So, um, so what I'm looking at, and hopefully you can see it okay, is a an image of the entire site. Um, so to the left of the site is Hamden Street. Um, as you, you come down to the site this way, and this is the driveway. Um, and the lot that we are going to be donating, uh, lot 14 to Arcadia, which we'll discuss, is over here, this large lot uh, to the right. And the development portion of the site is what I'm sort of highlighting here. And John, I'm going to hand it over to you now to go through sort of the details of the proposal. Are, are you seeing this okay, John? Yeah, I am. Um, so the, the uh, wetland boundary is the yellow line furthest to the right. And the upland is the left where the, where the building is, of course. And uh, there's an offset of 35 feet, which is the other yellow line. Um, uh, there is a uh, pink line on there, and that's indicating the uh, floodplain boundary, 100-year floodplain. And basically, this site um, to the south, which is to the right on this mm -hmm. uh, slide, the site to the south is very uh, thin uh, upper soils, and underneath is, is uh, uh, clay silt material. Um, and that extends underneath the, uh, the topography as it rises up back to the, toward the building. And uh, through a couple of borings that we did initially, we thought we were going to be able to um, infiltrate on this site uh, until we got into the, the setback issues. Um, we, we found mostly sandy material up, up on the upland part of the site, and then it dis disappears as you head down toward the the uh, the wetland boundary, and we believe the hydrology of the site runs the water runs down through that until it hits that uh, silty clay or clay silt, and uh, and then runs out at the bottom of the hill. In the spring, it's extremely wet from the wetland boundary down, and stays that way, uh, or at least last year it did. Uh, this year's uh, drought, so I imagine it's quite different. Um, but that's, uh, that's the, the general flow of what's happening uh, with hydrology. There is a seep, which is the blue lines on the northern or the upper part of the uh, page uh, where the pink line crosses it. And that's uh, just coming right out of the ground right there. Um, and when it rains, it does run down through a channel there that's covered by a, a lot of debris right now. And the blue line to the bottom of the page is the outfall for this property's existing uh, stormwater drain and the outfall for the municipal stormwater drain. Uh, the municipal drain is uh, 10 to 12 inches. It's, it's mostly collapsed right now. Uh, and the existing drain on this site is a four inch uh, PVC pipe. We did do some explore, ex exploration trying to find how deep the municipal drain was uh, and we dug down to about 12 feet and we didn't hit it yet. So we believe that this is all fill back in here um, behind this building at least and, and possibly under the building. Uh, ancient fill, but it's, but it's fill. Um, Going to advance to the next slide. So um, this is the, the proposed, or the, the, the existing stormwater, the uh, pink line that runs down the bottom part of the page right at the beginning of the driveway. If you could point to that, Danny, that'd be great. Is the uh, existing storm drain. The storm drain in the driveway, Dan? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if your mouse is moving or not. Yep, right there. So that's where the drain exists. I thought you were talking about that pink line. Yep, you, this pink line here and the storm. And that, and that pink line is the drain that exists. 
there's no uh, filtration and, and there's really no sump in that drain. It pretty much runs into the basin and out the pipe at the bottom. Uh, that is when it's not clogged and, and it gets clogged off and, uh, from silt and material that's flowing down from the existing driveway, which is pictured in the lower right of the, of the uh, slide. And also from the house above, uh, there's a erosion around the building uh, that is, I imagine is adding to it. Um, the blue line that's right parallel with that is where we believe at this point the municipal drain is. Um, so we, we would like to put in a new system and hook into that municipal drain and get rid of the small four inch drain that exists now. So if we can go to the next slide. So this slide, the, uh, the dark red line shows a catch basin just about in the same location as the existing basin. Uh, it will be a little larger. And then the rectangle that's in the lot actually represents the, uh, the slide that you see in the lower right of the picture. And that, the way that works is uh, the basin collects the water uh, and the basin is a deep sump catch basin. So it uh, is about four foot deeper than the pipe outlet. So heavy materials, uh, heavy sands and that type of stuff should uh, deposit out in that catch basin. And the rest of the water flows into the first chamber which is covered with filter fabric. You can see the black filter fabric around it in that picture. This whole thing is covered in stone and that becomes basically an underground uh, detention basin. So the water flows into that filtered chamber, then it runs out of the filtered chamber and fills the rest of the chambers. So all water that goes into that basin will be filtered. Um, the, the entire system is going to be covered or encapsulated in a HDPE um, high density polyethylene pond liner, uh, which will prevent infiltration of the water into the site. Originally, we thought we were going to infiltrate, um, but by the time uh, I got into the, the uh, setbacks required by the uh, best management practices in the stormwater manual, the, all the setbacks, when you adhere to all of them, there only ends up to be this little tiny sliver about, starts about four foot wide and goes to nothing about 16 feet away. So there wasn't any room on the upper part of the site to infiltrate any water. So we're basically capturing it, holding it, and then letting it drain out very slowly. Um, the, that brings up a, a, another uh, point that I want to make. The original design for this, uh, we were going to connect with the municipal pipe. The original design had only, uh, I think it was six galleys to begin with, which is basically half of one of the rows that are there now. And uh, we were going to put three and three and filter one of them and not filter the other one to create more storage. And that mitigates the 10 year storm, which is all that's required to be mitigated. Um, that would also have bypassed or flowed through the same system at a higher volume all of the other storms. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, DPW did not want us to outlet any more water than would flow from a four inch pipe. So that took our system from six galleys to 35 galleys in order to handle up to a 100 year storm at that slow uh, outfall rate. Uh, so the stormwater system is, is six times bigger than what the uh, DEP is, is really requiring for stormwater mitigation. And it also takes into account all of the water that flows off of the neighbor's lot and all of the water that flows in the direction of the stormwater system. About the center line of the buildings is where we're going to pitch the water back to run into this into this system. So all the paved areas and then the dirt driveway becomes paved as well so that uh, 
we can eliminate some of the silt coming off of it from that. And I guess we can go to the, is there any questions on the stormwater system before I leave that? Great, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, this slide shows the, uh, the BVW boundary and then the offset of the 35 feet. And the green area is the area where we will be doing work inside of that zone uh, that we're asking for uh, a, a variance for. Uh, the work in the driveway area is to expand the driveway uh, a couple of feet so that we can get one more parking spot up there. And then the other work beyond that boundary line is a, a planting of a tree and then mowing of all the knotweed from, uh, basically I drew a line and, it, and it's somewhat arbitrary, but uh, from the border, uh, from the BVW boundary straight across would make sense to keep that as a mowed area. Um, there's, uh, the proposal is to, to put a, a grass in there that, that uh, we're hoping will take very quickly, or we could, uh, we could put sod down, which would also take quickly. It's such a steep slope, uh, I'm concerned about erosion if we don't get something in there that is uh, quick growing so that we can get it maintained and, and kept maintained uh, to prevent the erosion from uh, taking out our fresh disturbed earth, which would, would be uh, occurring around that uh, K-turn, the parking lot area, um, to the uh, to the side of the new buildings, and also the buildings are going to have some disturbance around them. Uh, so planting the grass was that was the main reason for for choosing grass to be planted in those areas. Um, I did speak with uh, the the uh, scientists at Arcadia um, about mowing of the knotweed and and uh, versus uh, putting Roundup on it. Uh, they said that they use Roundup, but they, they use it uh, because it's an efficient process. They go in and treat it a couple of times and, and then it, it takes it down. Um, we're kind of opposed to the whole Roundup idea. Um, we don't think that it has a very good uh, uh, presence in our society right now. Uh, and, it's, and it seems like it's only getting worse. And uh, there's, there's not a lot of other things that, that will handle it as well. But continually mowing it, it will die. Uh, uh, there are roads through areas with knotweed that uh, are dirt and, and it doesn't grow into them. If you don't drive on it anymore, then, then it will start growing. Uh, and, th and in this case, if we quit mowing it, I'm sure it would grow right back up. Um, but that's, the, uh, that's what we're, we're looking for uh, uh, encroachment into the 35 foot buffer zone uh, to achieve. Um, and if I could just add, you know, we're, we're proposing this donation of the lower lot to Arcadia and they said that they would accept the donation, um, but they asked that we, that we also donate some additional money for um, management of the larger knotweed stand that span, spans their property, you know, all along below. Um, so, you know, we agreed to that as well. Uh, any questions on the, uh, on the, the, the mowing or, or discussion of that? Well, I think there may well be questions uh, from commissioners, but let's finish the presentation first. Okay. Um, that's about it. Uh, that's about what we've got for now, unless there's other questions and things that, that anyone would like to cover in the NOI or, or anything like that. It's pretty technical, so I, I didn't get into that in the public hearing. Questions from commissioners? Have you considered uh, on the uh, steep slope uh, with knotweed and saw the pictures that uh, Sarah sent um, uh, today? Uh, 
are there other kinds of um, vegetation that might not be low and smooth, but might have a root system that would hold. Um, so it might require brush hogging uh, once or twice a year, but otherwise would be uh, more native uh, uh, species that uh, would still be able to hold on that kind of a slope. My concern is erosion. Um, I suppose what, what might work is to plant grass and then plant these other species within it and let them take over. Uh, that's one concern. Uh, I think the only way that anything's going to work on a periodic mowing basis is if we use a chemical on it and kill it. Um, I, I, from discussions I've had uh, with, with other people dealing with this, uh, with knotweed, is that you cannot get rid of it unless it's continually mowed. Um, which is the reason for the, for the grass. I don't know if there's another if there's another grass that we could use that prevents erosion plus uh, plus uh, uh, allows us to mow it. If we don't mow it, we've, we've got to treat it with chemicals. And so far, uh, that's been resisted by us. Uh, um, just a quick question. Who, who's going to manage and execute the stormwater management plan? Uh, that has to go on file with the city. Um, no, but who, who's actually going to do the work and make sure that it's followed? Because I know quite often complex storm manage, water management plans, um, they, they have to be kept on top of for the first several years. So, Yeah, there's a, there's a, in, the, in the management plan, there's a requirement to get an engineer to uh, review it and give a report to the city. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and we haven't written the condo docs yet, but um, I think it's our intention to kind of write us ourselves in as the managers for a couple of years and then turn the management over to the owners after that. So they could continue to hire us or hire somebody else or self-manage at that point, but we'll get, we'll get it up and running. Yeah, it's going to need to be monitored. Um, it's so big that I, I don't anticipate it needing to be jetted out for Quite a while. <laughs> it, it's really, uh, it's really excessively big. And, and typically, with with the six galley system, we just had a couple of galleys that were uh, were looked at, and that would have handled the first flush. And that's primarily where you get all the silts and things. Beyond that, unless uh, something gets through that filter fabric, there's not a lot of maintenance. If, if something I don't know, maybe froze up or somebody had a car accident or something that could damage something. I don't see, uh, I don't anticipate a lot of hands on doing much to it except for that jetting it out and cleaning it out uh, once the, uh, once it gets deep enough. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you have a snow removal plan. So I'm concerned about pushing snow down that bank to the we, side uh, of the we do have that if you want to go to us the site plan danny um that i believe that's where the snow removal plan was um or it might be on is it labeled on this plan i can't zoom in enough i i did see it on one of the plans there were some uh, outlined areas that were that yeah. seemed to me relatively small i was concerned whether they were large enough in square footprint uh, to actually hold a reasonable amount of snow yeah well it's a driveway 10 feet wide and what we anticipated was uh, um, a plow going down through angled and pushing it into the front yards that's basically what it is at the what i wanted to point out though at the edges, every place that uh, goes toward the, the wetland is a guardrail. Um, so the snow can't be plowed into those areas. Without a front end loader, I guess you could do it with that if you hired somebody to do it. But uh, it's written in the plan, I believe. I, I don't recall though, for sure. We could, Sorry, sure I missed it. we could make sure it's written in our maintenance plan that that the plows are never to be pushed toward the wetland. But all the all the areas that, that where you look on this, 
like where the city's plowing it into the wetland right now, um, won't be able to be done. Are you able to, are, can you see what I'm, the PDF that I'm looking at on the screen right now? Or do I need to redo my screen share? Uh, no, you'll have to select, a, to, yeah, redo the screen share and then select whatever you're looking at. I'm trying to just see if I can get the snow. Um, do you know which plan that's on with the snow storage, John? I'll find it and then I'll find it out here. Um, I'm looking at the site. Maybe it's on the planting plan. I think it's on the site plan. But, uh... All right, so I'm going to stop share. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get your full screen up. And I'm going to share again. All right. See if I can share this to you. Okay. Uh, it's it's also oops, am I on? Yeah, it's also attachment C in the notice of intent. It's on proposed conditions of the site plan. Okay. The drawing in the upper plan. Page two of five in full size plans, yeah. Yeah, maybe you could zoom into that and take us around the the parking area. You can see the rails. If you zoom in, you see the rails around it. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to get to the right actual page. So there's the site plan. I'm going to zoom in for you. Hopefully this is working. Yep. Let's just get all the way in there. Yeah. Okay. So you can see the rails here. That's to prevent plows from pushing anything over the edges. Um, and then the snow storage areas aren't actually shown here, are they? Yeah, they are. Right in front of the, the, uh, the main building there. The, the new building, the snow storage of three arrows. Oh, yeah, right. So these guys, these areas um, for snow storage. And then presently, the city is plowing the whole neighborhood down here and past our property and leaving a giant pile there. And that's kind of what we're working with the city to try to fix and get them to just distribute it a little bit more evenly across the neighborhood along the sides of the road. Yeah. With their collect catch basins, all the water is coming down that road. Whether they plow it there or not, the water is ending up running down that road. And just to the right of this driveway is a uh, pretty decently eroded channel. So uh, do I understand correctly that the uh, water that is currently collected and water that uh, with the increased um, impervious area will be collected uh, will be, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to differentiate. So what's going um, through a, your detention system and then into the city uh, uh, the city's water uh, disposal system, and what's going to flow, uh, sheet flow or seep um, downhill into the wetland. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gathering that you, what you've tried to do is uh, develop a system that uh, will enable the city to collect no more at any peak flow uh, level than it has. Yeah. Radically no more. Uh, because it's, it's, it, what it is, is we've got a four inch pipe running uh, down the hill now, and they asked us to mitigate all the storms to that four inch pipe. Mm -hmm. So we've got the, uh, this system will take a 100 year storm and mitigate it to the four inch pipe storm of a 10 year storm now. And those, those numbers, if you, if you want to see them are, are on the stormwater plan, Danny, uh, right below. Well, and I confess the, the stormwater plan was 160 pages or something. It was some substantial document that I didn't. Uh, well, that was the, uh, the NOI. Uh, yeah. well, this is, I'll show you here. This is a pretty simple uh, explanation. Yeah, but the, uh, uh, are there, for all, because you have uh, additional, 
I there mean, you go. Yes, the uh, dirt road air footage. Of and but the uh, 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 trying to understand what's going to be collected from the roofs and paved areas. Uh, is that all going into the city's water system, or is some of it still going to be a flowing, uh, sheet flowing, or, or seeping down hill Look, into the wetland? Some of it will still go down this hill to the wetlands. Yeah. Half well, basically the direction that the roofs are pointing. Yeah. The direction that the water flows, and the the break in the property is almost in the center of the buildings. Uh, so uh, if you drew a line through the center of the buildings, actually there's little arrows on this thing that shows you the water flow direction uh, proposed. Uh, but basically from the center of the building, it all flows toward this drain. And from the neighbor's property, it all flows toward the drain. The entire neighbor's property. Mm -hmm. And just so everyone is clear, this development does meet all of the stormwater standards that are established by MassDEP. Um, and the, the city required that because it will be discharging into the city system. But the work itself is not subject to the stormwater standards through the Conservation Commission permitting process. It, it would meet them and the commission could issue that permit, but it's not actually subject to them here. Thanks, Sarah. Other questions or comments from commissioners? Sarah, can I uh, uh, ask you, since you did a site visit there, um, what is your sense of the best way to handle the knotweed, um, not the part that's going um, uh, to uh, Arcadia, but the part that's actually part of this project? Uh, what, what do you think is realistic and, and would be um, best in order to ensure that there is a reduction in this, uh, you know, not weed is pretty impossible stuff um, to get rid of, but um, uh, we've had some experience of stuff that works and stuff that doesn't, and you've seen how steep the topography is there. What, what, what's your guess about the best way to handle that? And is, is grass- Yeah, I know. Not, not weeds tough. I don't know if the root systems in a, a typical grass mix would be sufficient to revegetate it enough so that the knotweed wouldn't come back. Um, mowing a lot will take care of it eventually, um, but you might need some other types of plantings also. Um, but, you know, I mean, if, if that's something that's being proposed as part of the application and, and not necessarily as a mitigation, it, it's more up to the applicant to try and figure out what would work for them and what would make sense, I think, as long as the slope doesn't become destabilized and cause erosion. Yeah, the, the applicant mentioned the possibility of laying down sod. Um, uh, what's your guess? Would that be uh, more likely to give a, a, a good foundation than uh, seeded grass? Yeah, I mean, there's some evidence that knotweed that's covered up and can't get any sunlight for extended periods of time can be treated with a blanket type situation. I don't know if sod would be enough to do that, but it's kind of an experiment that might be worth mm -hmm. trying. Did we lose Kevin? It was me. Okay. Yeah, I, I oh, there he is. Up. I've, I've most of the last minute and a half or so, I, I did not hear or see. You're back now. Mostly we were quiet. Yep. <laughs> so, but what you, uh, I had asked the question, Sarah, about uh, sod as a, uh, a, a superior to uh, seeded grass. What, what's your sense of that? It, it might work. Um, we've tried in some instances in the city covering knotweed up with a blanket or something, but it, it hasn't worked for us. But we also really haven't had the, the staff or the manpower to be able to treat it properly. If it's something that's that's being done pretty consistently and also being mowed, that might, might be enough to do it. I, I think the mowing is the key. It's From what I can tell with that stuff, it's going to come back. As, 
as long as you don't mow it, it, it even right now like today compared to when i did the uh, the, the original uh wetland boundary the stuff has moved up the hill some because the mowing hasn't been brought down so it it just keeps going uh, i've heard uh, the uh the scientist at arcadia was telling me that in england it's really becoming a problem on buildings because there's a lot of cobblestone buildings and it's tearing the walls apart. I, I had no idea that it would that it would get that that bad, but I guess it gets a very heavy woody roof if it's let go long enough. Yeah, and and usually the conservation commission is looking at invasive species removal as a required mitigation for a project, but that's not the case here. This is just something that the applicant is proposing because they don't want it on the site, and it, it, it's something that they're. They prefer to eradicate. Um, we're and, actually not. Yeah. We're not even proposing to take it all off the site. Yeah. It's just uh, where we're where we are disturbing it. Uh, we want to propose something that's going to uh, be a quick uh, solution to erosion. Uh, and mowing grass is is definitely a, a quick solution to that. Whether it's grass or sod. And, and that will just, the, the knotweed won't come back as long as you keep mowing it. Um, that was the thought. It, it actually would, I think it would benefit, personally, I think it would benefit the development if it was gone because you can see right down into, into the wetland area. It's kind of a wall of, bamboo right now. Uh, we, there was just a, a chat question about public comment. Yes, the public comment comes um, after uh, the presentation by the applicant and questions by the commissioners. So uh, any, any other questions um, from commissioners? All right, well then now let's go back to uh, um, speaker view or uh, uh, we don't need the shared screen anymore. Um, and uh, please, uh, whoever would like to speak, uh, raise your hand and, and uh, get yourself unmuted. Uh, be aware that uh, public comment is to be addressed uh, to uh, the commission or commissioners um, and not hey, Kevin, I don't think they, they Sarah, got the I whole just, thing. The computers. Yeah, I, I'll repeat that. Um, so the public comments are intended yeah. to be addressed My to computer the commission and, and not to the uh, applicants. Thanks, Randy. So any comments from the public? Um, yeah, I'll, I, I guess I'll start. Um, I had a couple questions that came up for me. My name is Ruth Von Goler. I'm uh, not in a butter, but a neighbor just up the street. Um, I had a couple questions. One, uh, with the Intermittent streams, how does the commission handle those? Are those treated like other streams or do they get classified differently? What are the protective borders around those? Um, also wondered, uh, I guess I have three, three things I, I wanted to address. Uh, second is, um, you know, my, I've been living here about 15 years and have noticed increasing flooding in this area and I know that um, that we just saw where the 100 year floodplain is, but um, I think we saw the 100 year flood in the last few years, if I'm not mistaken. And it suggests to me that climate change, as well as um, there's been quite a, a significant amount of increased beaver activity down in that area of Arcadia and the wetlands, um, including this area. And I think it is making those water levels, uh, those boundaries shift quite a bit. And I wonder 
um, if the commission has taken that into consideration as well as climate change, because I think we're seeing increased number of very serious storms that will impact this area significantly. Um, and then the third thing I wanted to ask about, uh, getting back at the snow removal issue, is if there are best practices around um, the sort of percent of surface area to be cleared versus that storage area. Because what I saw was a site that is largely paved and three very small um, storage areas. So I don't, I don't know if there's like a best practices for how much area should be left for snow removal, including, you know, some of those three areas, I think included some sidewalks that also needed clearing and stuff like that. So um, those are my three questions. So snow removal, de wetland delineation, sort of shifting with climate change and beaver activity and the um, intermittent steep streams, how those get treated if differently. Okay, other questions or comments from members of the public? Anyone else? I think Claudia has her hand up. Yes, I am uh, um, Julia Batter. I live at 32 Hamden. And my question is about the vernal pools and the um, habitat that uh, it provides for amphibians and whether the Commission has considered the impact that the increase in buildings will have on that habitat. Um, I've lived there since 2011 and regularly the turtles, snap turtles and painted turtles come up to our yards to lay their eggs. And I don't know that they will have any room left to continue doing so. Other questions or comments? If not, I can say uh, in um, general terms that the Wetlands Act and the city's wetlands ordinance um, provides us with the, the guidelines of those things that we um, have to take into consideration and those things that can form the basis of approving an order of conditions to allow a project to proceed. Um, and so our, our deliberations as a commission are based on um, those uh, uh, those those requirements, those guidelines uh, that are written into the Wetlands Act and and the City Wetlands Ordinance. Um, each case is different, but with the the uh, statutory uh, requirements within which we have to operate are um, are pretty consistent. We are um, always cautious about. Um, setting precedent, um, but it, when a, an application comes before us, um, we'll hey, Kevin, I think we've lost you again. The, it's a proposal yeah, made by the applicant, in fact, that it has been met. Sorry, could you repeat that last sentence? We, we, we couldn't hear you. Yeah, I'm, uh, my apologies. I don't know what's going on with my computer. Um, the, uh, we, we have to operate within the guidelines and the requirements of uh, statute. Uh, and um, so while uh, we have some broad responsibility, we also have a lot of instruction about how we exercise that responsibility. Um, so part of our decision will be based on how well has the applicant demonstrated that this will represent um, uh, an improvement over current conditions, um, that which is in the uh, language, the, the statutory language that we're obligated to follow, uh, the primary determinant. Um, the, uh, uh, the broader 
aesthetics of uh, how things look, uh, the uh, um, downstream off property uh, impacts uh, are not usually things that we can um, exercise much judgment about. We're constrained to operate within the language um, that we're given. And, and to the exercise our decision. Um, um, and and is, I was going to slow. Uh, um, regarding the question about the intermittent streams and the vernal pools, intermittent streams are afforded the same buffer zone protection that a bordering vegetated wetlands would. Um, and in this case, all of the intermittent stream boundaries are within those bordering vegetated wetlands. So there's there's no additional buffer zone. Um, and there are vernal pools and potential vernal pools within the, the meadows area, but they're not uh, within 200 feet or probably even much greater of, of the Fuck you. Like here. So I apologize for my computer going in and out here. Um, but the, uh, um, if there are no other um, comments from the public, uh, we'll uh, take a motion to close the hearing. Move to close the hearing. And a second. Second. Thanks, Jason. Um, Sarah, you need a roll call for this? Yes, we do. Um, Jack? Yes. Randy? Yes. Kevin? He's frozen and, again. And uh, Jason? Yes. All right. We're unanimous to close the hearing. Sarah, I imagine you called my name and I'll say yes, but uh, my computer is going in and out. I apologize. So hearing is closed. So the hearing is closed. Um, so the, uh, as I was starting to, to say, I think our um, decision uh, about whether to grant an order of conditions um, is that uh, uh, whether the application as we've uh, read it and as has been discussed uh, Ha includes mitigation member, uh, measures that will improve uh, the existing conditions um, of the wetlands or uh, uh, adjoining upland. Um, and my overall sense is that uh, it does. Uh, the, uh, the, it seems like this has not been well, uh, there hasn't been good stewardship for a long time on this parcel. And, uh, this, as a result, will result in improvement in the way that uh, stormwater um, uh, is captured. There will be uh, uh, it, some additional um, treatment of the water that right now is uh, not being treated. Um, I do have some concern about the erosion that the um, upgrade the, the, the ideas about what we might do to ensure that uh, um, doesn't result in um, erosion and ad additional contamination down into the wetland itself. But Um, so, commissioners, what do you think? I think it's a, a pretty well engineered plan. Uh, I wish the actual site was a little bit more upland, but property is owned and uh, something wants to be done with it. And the engineering obviously spent the time to do the uh, significant planning to mitigate building. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm comfortable with the mitigations. Um, 
insofar as it, it's um, water release and sediment release is not going to be worse, be better. Um, like, like you, Kevin, I have concerns about making sure that, that there's no erosion on the hill. Um, so, yeah, I, I would lean in favor of sod. And then the, the other concern, and, and the other concern I have is I think that as, as a commission and, and um, as the developers is ensuring that the, the stormwater management plan is well executed and followed up on. Um, otherwise, the, uh, you know, the knotweed will come back and uh, we want to be sure that uh, all the mitigations that are put in place are, are operating the way they're supposed to. I mean, one, one thing, as you said, uh, John, I think once things are operating effectively, you could turn it over to the homeowners. But if, if the homeowners picked it up year one, um, I would, wouldn't be surprised if there were a few stumbles along the way. Other comments from commissioners? Can, can we write that as a, as a condition that the management plan be uh, operated by uh, an engineer or? Uh, yes, Sarah, is Danny, that within the, our purview? Um, since it's, this isn't a, uh, project that's jurisdictional under the Wetlands Protection Act stormwater standards. Um, it, it's, it's slightly outside the commission's purview, um, but I know that this will be administered by the DPW and there will be an O&M. Um, and John or Danny, I don't know if that's something that they already might have discussed with you and regarding the implementation. John, you're muted. Sorry about that. It's part of the um, NOI right now. I believe it's uh, it's in there. Yeah, <laughs> part of the book. <laughs> and DPW um, gave us conditional approval based on a plan that met their satisfaction as well. So, yeah, the the, the engineering supervision's in it, and the. Uh, and there's a specific checklist for specific parts of it to be checked at a specific interval. Um, and, and in this case, there may actually end up being more control because this is discharging to a city system. So DPW will have more involvement than they typically would. Okay, good. And I'm sorry, I, I only heard parts of that. I heard Jack suggesting uh, writing in a, as a condition the um, ongoing uh, monitoring of the uh, water treatment system, uh, but I didn't hear all of that or, or by whom or for how long. Uh, yeah. So that will, that will be addressed in the stormwater operating and maintenance plan, uh, which will be recorded as part of the planning board review process, which DPW will also have an involvement in going forward. Jason, I thought you were gonna say something. Oh, I, I think you guys covered it all very well. So I, I think uh, there's not much left to say. <laughs> um, I guess I, I would only add is the, just to mirror what everyone said about erosion. Um, and having a maybe a more robust and detailed plan about erosion and, and plantings on that slope. And um, Jason, again, I hear I heard most of that seems uh, to be in agreement that we want to see a more thorough going plan about the plantings and the erosion controls for that? Did I hear that properly? Exactly. Um, and Sarah, how we might require that as a, uh, a supplement to the existing plan uh, presented to the commission before the start? Yeah, I think a, a supplemental planting plan, even if it's just more details about what will be placed on that slope and any uh, additional shrubs or other species that might be added and then some reporting um, just to make sure that there, there isn't any continued erosion. And we usually do that for a three growing cycle, three year growing cycle um, uh, to be able to monitor 
and have some established percentage of mm -hmm. uh, surviving uh, material 75% or something like that, just uh, um, so that we can be sure that three years in, this hasn't just been all washed away. All right. Um, any further discussion? Any further um, comments by commissioners? Someone want to make a motion um, to uh, grant an order of conditions with uh, standard conditions plus those additional just discussed? So moved. I'll second that. All in favor, Sarah, you need the roll call. All right, uh, Jack? Yes. Randy? Yes. Kevin? <laughs> okay, and, uh, and Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous. And you got my yes, even though my computer's going in and out? I did, yes. Very it's good. delayed. All right, thank you. Um, all right, well, I, I, uh, I apologize for that, but uh, uh, in my, this is, we're all, we're all making this up as we go along, all of these Zoom commission meetings, uh, but in the past, I haven't had, had this much difficulty with staying connected, I apologize. Next item, we have a uh, certificate of compliance, uh, Ottoman Road. It was proposed. Is there anybody okay. here representing that? Or is that just uh, uh, based on the material you sent along, Sarah? I don't know if anyone was planning to join for that portion of the meeting, but I can speak to it if not. And the, the request for certificate of compliance was also really comprehensive for this one. Right. Um, so I saw the pictures. That looked looked like it was uh, a pretty completed project. So this was put in, I think, in the, in the 90s. Um, I, I, can, can you hear me? 1988. Yes. Uh, is that you? The yeah. AA? No, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is John Dickinson. Oh, OK. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I'm I'm new to this too. <laughs> uh, so John, this was a permit that was issued to you or to your family originally, correct? Did you want to give a, a quick overview of what it was? Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah, I was already out of the house at that point in time. All, in fact, all the kids were. Um, that was a. My father built that house. Um, I never lived there, but uh, he died about 13 years ago. They built it in 1988 um, and Huntley did all the work and I was mentioning to you, I used to work for, for Bud for several years. Um, uh, so he, they built that and then um, I never lived there or anything. He died 13 years ago, my father, and then my mother died last year. And um, so none of the, none of the kids, you know, wanted the house, you know, so so I'm selling it, yeah, as the executor. And um, so the, the buyer's attorney, you know, they, they came across it doing the deed search. And uh, so it had to be addressed. They wanted it to be addressed. So, and I don't blame them. So, you know, you want to put closure on, on things. So, um, so I, uh, you know, contacted you. And then I contacted Mark Reed over at Heritage to have him come over and verify everything. Fortunately, I found the the original um, application. You know, it was all bound in a in a thing. I gave that to Mark over there, so he came over and and verified that. He's the one that that did the application and everything. All right. So, and the house itself is outside resource areas, but the order of conditions permitted a new stream crossing. And it, I was surprised it's an open bottom. Culvert. I didn't expect to see that. I thought it would be a pipe, but that was great to see. It must have been one of the first private ones in the city, I imagine. 
And I, when I went out and did the site visit, I noted that there was a previous stream crossing that was sort of this dilapidated wooden structure um, that was diverting stream flow and causing some scour. And John, you indicated you'd already taken that out. Yeah, I went there yesterday by hand and, 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 and you know, just took it out of there and cleared it up. It looks, it's fine. It looks fine. You know, little, you know, I, I, I didn't even know it was there. I mean, like I said, we didn't grow up there, so we weren't down by the stream playing, you know, and exploring that neighborhood, that thing. And I didn't even know it was there. It just blends in and who knows, you know, so yeah, it's fine. I got rid of it. And th that was my only concern at the site visit, just that, that that old structure was still in place and, and should have been removed, but the, the new crossing itself was fine. So would someone make a, a, a motion to grant the completed order of conditions, the certificate of compliance? Quality. So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. Second. Any further discussion? If not, uh, roll call. All right, Kevin? Yes. Jack? Yes. Randy? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, that's your man. Thank you for you know taking care of that, helping me with that. So I didn't catch all of what you just said again, Sarah, I apologize, but I assume we have uh, no other uh, business before the commission? That's it for me, unless anyone else has something to note. None for me. All right, what, the one thing I'll try to give some thought to is what to do in the future if uh, we have a bare quorum and then like happened to me today, uh, I got knocked out about twenty or thirty percent of the time. So uh, you can you can always call in using the number. Um, you can keep uh, the video on too. Just mute your computer. Um, I know that wasn't an option for Mason because he didn't have a landline. His right. phone was no, good, dead. And good, good. Uh, Jason and I know you said your computer died too. It's a rough week for everybody. Yeah, it's been a tough week for computers. I think. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe it won't happen again, but we, if it does, that's a good uh, good idea. So I'll, I'll remember. All right. And we, we definitely will have a meeting in two weeks. There's a lot of home sales going on, so there will be more requests for certificate of, certificates of compliance and a, a few, I think few other things as well. You're back, Kevin. Yeah, barely. Boy, I have no idea what's going on here. But. I wonder if it's storm related and the, it, some of the infrastructure isn't doing quite as well as, as it should be. Could be. It's the first time it's happened uh, this way. But uh, um, I know there are not, portions of the city the where they're still without and power and, and some, and uh, uh, either my computer or my that might be your sign to call it a day. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs> if anyone needs anything in the interim, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, all. Good night. Good night.